All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the one and only Helming Power Hour, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever it requires. Right? 15, 15 yeah. minutes. <laughs> Matters what we're talking about. Uh, the Helming quarter hour. <laughs> the quarter hour. <laughs> You got a good point. I mean, you know, if, if we can get it to you quicker, that means you can jump out and watch it faster. That's the point. Yeah. I'm it's, sure it's that's, not, yeah, I'm sure that's how that works. <laughs> you don't, you don't tune in for us to read you the script of a movie. You tune in for some good recommendations. That's true. That's very true. That's, that's kind of why we're here and, or the revisit, the ever popular revisit, which is a lot of what we've been doing for the majority of this show. Uh, I know for, uh, I don't know, we've been branching out a little bit, watching some stuff we haven't seen. So, uh, yeah, this I is, mean, it, this is it, definitely a revisit with, with this one we're doing today for sure. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm Rick. I'm Danny. Danny over yeah. that way, that way over there. I, uh, two on, great I'm, tastes that taste great together. It, it's <laughs> like you're in the movie theater and they drop the, the chocolate bar and it lands in that lady's jar of peanut butter. And right. It's meant to be right so you know when you're in a theater and you see the lady eating the big jar of peanut butter that's who you want to sit by that's not uh, <laughs> i mean maybe somebody does it what was not she eating the peanut butter with has always been my question like a spoon maybe you don't see <laughs> one you never see one it's just an open jar of peanut butter <laughs> she got a straw what? in it <laughs> that that's a love connection right there she can <laughs> eat peanut butter straight out of the jar with her fingers <laughs> You know that there's there's wild times ahead. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> She's probably from the south. <laughs> hey, I, I want the Aurora Borealis behind me. How do you get the northern lights back there? That's just a filter here on uh, the ever popular Zoom. You just uh, kind of look them up, and uh, there yeah, it is. I should, I should try more. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Should you? <laughs> oh, you make a good point. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, it doesn't sell or, or it doesn't really work for, you know, extra downloads or nothing like that on YouTube. So is it worth it? I don't know. Do I, I like I to might, be fashionable? Yes. Well, I, I might do it later. Right right now, I'm, I'm not finding. Never mind. So this week, we're excited <laughs> to bring you, um, you know, 2007 treat. Or is it a trick? Which or is it? trick. It could oh. be both. Yes. Nice segue there. I like that. I like that. You know, just, <laughs> just forget talking about this other stuff. Let's talk about the movie. Yeah. Michael Daughtery, man. Uh, first time director at this point. Guy that's also brought you Krampus. He also brought us Godzilla, King of the Monsters. So and just when you think you've got him figured out, he throws yeah. you a curveball. Right. So, uh, you know, three for three, I'd say he's got a pretty good track record so far. Uh, he also wrote, was the writer for uh, Superman Returns. I don't know if you knew that or not. I, I did see that come up on his credits, and I did wasn't sure. I don't think I delved into it, but I, I saw that it was there. So he's a writer on that, huh? Yeah, yeah. Which that's is the one where, he, where where Superman gets shot in the eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's not good. I thought that was a pretty decent movie. Well, that's all I remember about it. It could have been. <laughs> All I remember is the Superman gets shot in the eye thing, and I'm like, okay. It's the one where the guy playing Superman just kind of got a, a raw deal because, you know, everybody just kind of forgot about him. Brandon Ruth. Ruth, Ruth, Brandon Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> he he looked good, too. He was he was kind of... Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into that because we're going to talk about... <laughs> 2007 strict <laughs> or treat we're a little bit late because you know it's a, the spooky season is is mildly behind us there are still trees changing color and gourds uh getting uh ripe in the vegetable garden but you'll be touching my gourds it's not the halloween anymore because that's behind us and i hope you had a good halloween i know sure. i did yeah 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 well, so our plan was to was to get together before halloween but you know we got busy not hey. that kind of busy but we were busy independently and here we are. We're going to talk about it right now. Yeah, we're living life and talking about trick or treat. That's right. So, so Rick, you know, go go ahead. What, what was your what is your top reason for people to go out right now and snag themselves a digital copy and put it in their eyeball? 
<laughs> I just say overall, man. I mean, this is this is definitely that anthology kind of feel. This movie is brilliant. How it's yeah. put it all together, very pulp like as far as mixing the story timelines. Man, I was gonna say it's very much like the the Halloween anthology Pulp Fiction. Yeah, that's it. It's that's just it. like because the sequencing is done in such a way where you're like, oh, I know what's going on over here because that's already been done in another story, but it isn't done as separate stories. They're just all kind of entangled. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it it misleads you to, to a certain degree. Of course, that's the beauty of anthologies too, the little short stories. But uh, I just, again, it blows my mind every time I go back and revisit this one, how good it is. And people don't talk enough about it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I think that I said it as kind of an aside. I was like, well, we could do trick or treat. And you're like, yeah, absolutely. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Like, why, <laughs> why don't we put it at the top of the list? For some reason, we don't. But yeah. it, it's definitely, you know, it toes the line as a, as just, like you said, it's the look of it. You know, every time there's a jack-o'-lantern lit up, you know, everything's, something's basked in orange light. Uh, it's, it's a, you got that, that festival going on in that Ohio town where all those people are in costume. The, the whole thing just looks like Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it should be a go-to movie for your Halloween season. No doubt about it. Yeah. It, it should be right up there with however many Michael Meyer movies you want to set through. It's, <laughs> it should be right up there. You, you should do like trick or treat and the other trick or treat. And then, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Halloween three, you know, that should be your selection. Those are, those are all, I mean, you know, like, and, and you know, I noticed at the beginning, it's got like the creep show comic book. Yeah. Kind of, but there's no reason for it. Like it, it no. intros and it outros with the comic book but it doesn't like have the pages flipping like in creep show or something it, that there's no tie to that. I wonder I guess, if that was maybe a selling point of him, of them pitching this movie and, and you know, remember creep show. It's kind of like creep show, except the story's all intertwined. I mean, that may be a, a pitch. So your producers, everybody's like, well, yeah, we need to do all the, all the other yeah. stuff. So it's possible, but, but that looks great too. You know, all yeah. the art in those little panels, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't look, cheap because sometimes you can get those and they just kind of like use a filter on on a uh on a on a screenshot and and make it into a comic book page it's an effect and and it, and for me I, I don't really like the way it looks yeah but, but this is kind of they got some artists in there and they made some good renderings of these things and what about the instructional film at the beginning the, uh, <laughs> when you're going out this trick-or-treating season make sure you take care to do the following things and stay safe you know and it's right. kind of like it, it segues into something a lot more sinister. Yeah, I, I just again, it's it's brilliant the way it's set up. It, it's <laughs> it's just well done, man. I there I can't think of a really weak spot in this. the The acting is solid, cinematography is great. Everything just works. Yeah, it, it almost you know it almost does the 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 scream thing where it has like an introductory kill that yeah. you know that t that has a and they. It has a connection to all the other stories. You know, I think every character in this bumps into that chick who gets killed at the beginning yeah. in her giant comical robot costume. <laughs> She's walking down the road and people are just like knocking her. I can see why she was pissed off when she got yeah. home. You know, it was like, this is terrible. All these people are like just rude and and she's not wrong. Right. But, uh, but then she, she blows out the candle. Um, sure. And the misleading of that too, right? Because you kind of get an eye, almost a ghost face kind of killer standing off in the distance. Oh yeah, yeah. So it does it does the little things to to kind of throw you a little bit too, which is again just so well done. Uh, yeah. Go ahead if you've got something you want to bring up. So well, I'm you know I've got some notes over here. I was just gonna say um. Oh, well said. I'm trying to discern <laughs> my notes here. I don't know what that that means. Um, dead air. We don't want dead air. I'm going to say Dylan Baker as you know, Stephen Wilkins, the <laughs> the principal slash dad slash neighbor killer guy. He's next on my list. Yep. He's 100 percent a reason to watch this movie. He he gives a little, you know, speech about Halloween and why it's important to follow the traditions. You know, <laughs> bing, he's got that knife. And, 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 you know, what you don't realize, he's poisoning the kid at the same time and, and getting ready to commit murder somewhere else later that evening his whole thing entwines with everything and he's just a horrible person that both provides you with a horrible story and also like someone that you really want to see die 
Yeah. Yeah. And I love the whole scenario where he's trying to get rid of the body and the neighbor comes out and he's, you know, trying to act like he's not doing anything, even though his head and shoulders are sticking up out of a hole in the ground that he's burying the kid in. And then his yeah. son keeps yelling out the window, Dad, can you come help me with the pumpkin? No, shut up. I'll be in there in a little bit. I mean, it's just, it's great, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's, um, and you know, it's, it's not really a comedy, but it, it's put together so well that you can laugh at these segments, even while it's it's a horrible story, you know? Definitely got the, the black humor in it for sure. I mean, it's just yeah. funny, the dark humor. It's it's great. Uh, and also, you know, when he gets up there and finally does carve out the pumpkin with the kid, you know, it's, right, it's right. sinister as well, right? You misdirect there as well, but yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, if, if you've watched it, you know what we're talking about. And if you haven't, I'm not going to spoil it because- the- right. Is every every second of this is is a is a gem on screen. It really is. Uh, well, I mean, you can go right into that into the streets where you get the vampire scene going on, right? Right, right. He, he yeah, he's out. Uh, he's out cavorting and doing sinister acts. You know, even when he's not at home. <laughs> and <laughs> and of course that you know you you get the story of the the girls that are all dressed up in their little hot costumes and trying to pick up guys and go out to a party and uh you know they've got the one girl that's not as hip as the others or considered a virgin yeah it's her first time her first time like and that of course has has a has a payoff later um it's anna panquin of course you know like who who was a big deal in 2001 i mean what Mm. she had just been in the x-men movies which there's a connection there because Mark Singer was the top producer in on this, and Mark Singer directed those first X Men movies. So yeah, it was probably hey, you know, I've got a job for you. You know how those things go. Sure. Hey, it's a cat tail. Yep, it's a cat. I know. <laughs> she she got all dressed up for Halloween. Oh yeah, I have to say, man, I I, I did like uh, the party. I guess you'd say. Uh, you, you're, you're type, you're tapping into all things classic horror here. You got the vampire, you've got, you know, uh, the serial killer, you've got the possibly werewolves, you've got everything here. Yeah. And and that's, that's what makes it move. It, it just, it moves so fast and doesn't get boring at all. No. And I'm just going to like, to, t- Oh, you know, and I just figured out my note. I have I have some clown in the hole as a note. I'm like, what the hell was that thing? Oh, yeah. It's been a few days. And then I realized it's because when he's hiding the body, there's already a body in that. <laughs> <laughs> when you don't even get in there, he killed that that kid. But there's already somebody in the hole. Not dead yet either. Yeah. Like he kicks it, it's like <laughs> uh, Principal Wilkins is a... Uh, is a, a pretty nasty dude, but I'm gonna have to say that the, the the most visually rich story is the is the middle one that maybe is the most like an anthological story where the uh, there are some kids going to a rock quarry yeah. where there was supposedly uh, a, a bus that was driven into the water because there were these you know um, different kids whose parents couldn't handle them anymore and. That whole thing, the 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 masks and costumes yeah. from the flashback are just horrifying. Absolutely, you know, paper mache Dracula mask, and and somebody who's got let's just a paper bag with teeth. <laughs> like I don't know what it was supposed to be, but it was horrifying. <laughs> yeah, you see those posts all the time on Facebook with people showing those masks, and it's just like holy smoke. So I'm sure that was some sort of inspiration. Yeah, I mean, and these, you know, they're, they're, I guess they're supposed to look like horrifying, you know, 1940s or 50s masks. Yeah, but they are, they're absolutely terrifying. And, you know, the, the whole thing, too, is, is kind of an unsettling, like, the kids getting, getting murdered um, yeah. story. That whole middle section is really, it's the story that ties it all together. Like, sure. But it's the one that kind of has the least connection to all the other stories. But it's like the most, like I said, the anthological horror short. And, but it still does have a thread that, mm-hmm. that you know, oh, the, yeah. the, the the one girl, you know, 
Well, and the, and the kids are trick or treating, looking for jack o' lanterns, and that's that's right. you know threaded in the beginning of the movie because they need the jack o' lanterns for their little ceremony or right. they uh, commemorate the uh, the the tragedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty creepy, pretty pretty cool, man. I, I just again, uh, there's not a weak spot in this. I mean, obviously, the one everybody talks about, we've kind of covered the majority of them in in a very quick kind of pace, but Sam. Yeah. I mean, yes. the, the the character Sam is kind of the uh, mascot. Yeah, he's kind of the 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 uh, he's the image that comes up most when you talk about this particular movie, mm-hmm. soon to be series. Maybe they Possibly. say they're making a part two. Uh, maybe, yeah. But yeah, Sam, he yeah. shows up in in multiple places. He, he's he's he's, lo- he, he's lovable but deadly all at the same time. Yeah. A little, little, so he's a little guy wearing feety pajamas, has a pumpkin head. No, he has a, he's a, he's like a, like a burlap sack head. Right. Yeah. And, and it's shaped like a pumpkin. (laughs) What about Brian Cox in this as the neighbor? There's another connection to Mark Sanger who, you know, absolutely shows up in all the X Men stuff too. Like, what about him? And they're like, he needs to look like this other character from this other thing. So we're going to put a big old (laughs) big nose on him. That's all you got to do. I was like, that looks like Brian Cox, but why has he got that pointy ass nose? Like, <laughs> um, but it's like putting it's like putting another chin on Bruce Campbell. It's like, what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> and that's kind of it's kind of like I, I wondered why they had that until I was like, oh, oh, they're tying him to the picture from the previous story, so that when that re- that's revealed, yep. he'll look more like that guy. Yeah, yeah. Now, again, a lot of detail in this, man. You know, for something that moves as fast, there's a lot of work that went into putting this story together and the details. It's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah, I'm. And, you know, I, like like you said, we have been moving through this at a clip, and I think it's because, unlike other anthologies, all the stories are tied together. So it's more like a fluid movie. And talking about it is just kind of saying you've got to watch this and see how they take these stories and tie them all together into this like homage to to halloween yeah yeah it's just it's brilliant and again like i said it's been a while since i've seen it last and again i'm just blown away every time i watch it by just how clever of a movie this thing is man uh (laughs) i I need to watch it more often realistically it's uh it's I always find something new whenever I yep. watch it. And, yep. you know, I think this last time, maybe I'd seen it before, but but the thing I, I noted was that uh, that Billy Wilkins, you know, Stephen Wilkins' son, the one who, Dad, will you help yeah. me? At the end, he's dressed as his dad. He's wearing the shirt that's bloodstained, like his dad's shirt was bloodstained from, from hiding the body and handing out candy. And yep. it's like, you know, oh, <laughs> well, that, that's a that's a neat little little nod to the earlier plot, right? Um, and you know, I have on here so many times just the way that the whole thing is is put together is yeah. so much fun to watch. Yeah, well, <laughs> even how about the idea of taking the 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 villain of one section, throw him into another section of a story, and he becomes the victim. And and that's kind of where that, that's another point that I was about to to jump in with. I'm glad you said that because the way that the stories are tied together, you have people who are villainous, and then you have spirits of Halloween, right? Who kind of punish these villainous people? Like there's a, there's kind of like a pecking order where you know there's some people who are victims, and there's some people who are predators, and then there are these spirits that come and they end up punishing the guilty right so it kind of gives you that that um it it gives you that that um feeling of justice right you know that that like you know not only horrible things are happening to people but justice is served right the whole friday the 13th philosophy right if you're out messing around you know having sex doing drugs the, the the vengeance comes down on you here it's like if you're out using the laws of Halloween for your own doing for your own evil, you're it's still going to catch up with you. Yeah. Sooner or later, there's going to be something that's bigger and badder than you are. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I, I really think it's just, 
tremendously well put together. You know, you, you okay? Did a tree fall in the woods behind you? I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> it's the spirits of Halloween. They've, they've caught up to you. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe they're right behind the door. Maybe they're off in those trees in the background. <clears throat> Oh, but yeah, like man, I, I think <laughs> I just think everybody should have this in their list of stuff that you watch when when it comes to this kind of season. Yeah, I, I find myself not wanting to give spoilers because I, yeah. I'm hoping that everybody here will go watch this. If you haven't watched it, you know, just keep in mind, it's it's like a Pulp Fiction thing. Don't miss any of the little details because they knock you over the head with them for sure. But if you look away for a second, you'll miss one of the characters interacting with another character that is going to have something happen later and it's all prevalent to the to the overarching story right there's someone behind you i know i know <laughs> hello <laughs> Ooh. you never know what's going to happen on this show it's it you know we get special guest stars all the and time also special guests also special guest tommy lee wallace folks believe that like when one of his people said he might be on our show and then i like made fun of his name for a whole yeah. episode yeah you kind of ruined that for us that's okay yeah, that's, that's what i do <laughs> that and i don't find cool backgrounds like the aurora borealis uh you know well you, you do what you can uh, you know when this is over you can go find your own special effects it's not a big yeah, deal I probably won't yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what else to say about this one uh just i'm gonna say that, that the equivalent this movie is the equivalent of the jack-o'-lantern the, the yard full of jack-o'-lanterns that you see on halloween that you're just like this gets it right so it it looks great it it has the whole feel of halloween all the stories are tight the way they all tie together is fantastic and you know the the only way that it could be better is you know i can't think of a way but i can't think <laughs> anything that they would get rid of i mean well it's all so so tight a package it's not forced i think that's the thing about it too i mean it's 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 put together for a reason it's not just a cash grab of hell let's make a, a halloween type thing so i'll give you an example i just recently watched slugs again that's right oh, yeah. same same guy that brought us pieces brought us slugs <laughs> and slugs even though as ridiculous and crazy as it is it's a halloween movie Bastard. you know why bastard oh. <laughs> there's they they only say it in reference there's never any kids trick-or-treating and this is it's halloween when all this stuff is happening you get to see a a party out in the woods and one guy has a jack-o'-lantern on top of his truck just to let you know it's halloween by the way <laughs> it's halloween so you know it's almost like did they just throw that in there to try to say you know i don't know i don't know why they even threw it in there anyways it don't really matter but there's there's so many cases when it's just a a forced in kind of thing it has nothing to do with what's going on and i just it was think so they could have that whole that whole call and respond yep. where the, all the kids at the at the bonfire say when i say halloween you say slugs halloween <laughs> slugs halloween. slugs yeah. <laughs> i mean uh, that's kind this, of my favorite part of the whole thing really this this movie could be the ultimate halloween movie i'm not gonna argue with that there, yeah. there are movies that are are good in a in a different genre, you know, slasher movies or occult movies or whatever that that maybe beat this. But like as far as just a Halloween film, trick yeah. or treat, yeah, I'd, I'd put it up against anything you got to 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 push. Even I, Halloween I, three, even Halloween three, and that's Halloween that's getting three. on up there, man. Uh, people love that stuff. They're like, <laughs> you know what I love? Halloween three. I'm like, I didn't ask you. <laughs> Oh man. <laughs> Sometimes I forget why I like recording with you, but that's that's perfectly it right there. <laughs> what do you mean when I call out random people that haven't said anything and <laughs> look look, I pre it takes all kinds. Yeah, it takes absolutely. All, I like I like recording with you too. <laughs> oh, I don't have anything else to add for this this episode. Have we have we gone too long? I don't know. <laughs> I'm um. I got so we get we got. Here's a reason that I didn't mention, but you know, there's some there's some werewolf TNA. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, and it's done in, in a, in a gratuitous fashion that looks great. And it also, it's not like the howling too, where it was a different kind of werewolf TNA that, that it was, I think is lesser. But, That's all you needed at the yeah. end of this movie though, would be like that scene over and over. Civil Danning, Danning over and over. Yeah. yeah Civil Danning ripping off the shirt. So, so, you know, I, I said the whole movie looks great. All four stories tied together. Yeah, uh, Dylan Baker as the as as the you couldn't do it without right without Principal Stephen Wilkins. Yeah, you couldn't do it without him. Um, the kids' masks are horrifying. You know, bag with teeth, <laughs> huge pointed bag with teeth. Huge. <laughs> and 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 evil is punished by evil. Right. Yeah, yeah. The spirits rule. Yeah. So. But well, there you go, folks. I don't know what else to say. I, 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 yeah, I do know what to say. Go watch this movie again. I don't even care if it's past Halloween. I don't care if it's Thanksgiving or Christmas. This is a good movie, regardless. If you like I anthologies, think... it's one of the best anthologies, too. And like you said, the look of it, it looks great. The sets are great. The filming is crisp. Um, the, the way the story is tied together is tight. It's, it's just a fun watch. Yep. Go check it out. Show sure enough. Y'all heard it here first. If well, maybe not first. You've heard it here from us. You heard what it we think now. about it. Right. If you didn't know, you do know. So th thanks for being with us, uh, for talking about you know, one of our favorite movies and hopefully soon be one of yours. Uh 2007's Trick or Treat. And uh, you know, check it out. Show sure enough. Till then. Peace. <laughs>